Without any further ado, I want to introduce one of my sons in the faith. Um, let me see. I'm not quite sure whether he looks like Dad or me, but anyway, <laughs> one of my favorite sons in the faith, Dr. Bobby Patton, if you'll please come. Let us pray. Gracious and most holy God, we're once again so privileged and honored to come before thy people, come before you. And Father God, we ask you to right now and give us the words to say. Give us the truths that you would have us to understand from your word. Bless our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew's Gospel, the 25th chapter. Acknowledgement to God and to Pastor and his absent and to Pastor Mickey Walters. It is indeed a privilege to be here. When your dad and your mom calls and tell you to do something, if your dad and mom is George and Mickey Walters, you don't argue. They didn't call for a discussion, and it wasn't opinion, an opinion. It wasn't multiple choice. It wasn't optional. They just said, be there. Amen. Pastor Walter said he wouldn't be here, but Sister Mickey would be here taking notes and making sure that I did things right, so I'm going to do things right. Amen? Amen? But we're honored to be here. My task is the preaching of the gospel, and right there in the 25th chapter of St. Matthew, do everybody have that? It's a lengthy chapter, so I want you to listen to it. I want you to listen to it. We're going to use a little technology this morning. Chapter 25. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth. I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come 
and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For every one who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by My Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Sister Sierra, when I was in seminary, Never will forget one of my favorite classes where the professor on the first day of class, after he introduced himself, he gave us a copy of the final exam. He went over every question and he went over the answers. And then he began to teach the class. But I never will forget that. He gave us a copy of the final exam. And he explained, I'm giving this to you to set the parameters of our discussion in this class. I'm giving this to you as a guideline of where we're going in this class. I'm giving you these questions that these are the questions that you will be accountable for at the end of the semester. I'm telling you the answers because that's what I'm expecting to see on the final exam. Don't give me your opinion. Give me what I've given you. And then he commenced to teaching the class. And he said, some of you will not pass this class because you're not going to take 
this gift serious. Some of you are not going to study, and some of you will fail the exam. I'm hoping that the majority of you pass my class with a passing grade. In the 25th chapter of Matthew, Jesus teaches his last class. This is his last class. He gives four parables to his disciples about faithfulness. Faithfulness. The parable of the virgins is about faithfulness. The parable of the talents is faithfulness. The parable of the sheep and the goat, it's faithfulness. He wants to know, will you be faithful in how you handle the duties of life? How do you handle one another? This is the final exam. This is the final exam. Read the discord. When you get to the 26th chapter, Jesus is on his way. He's on his way. He, he's, he's on his way. The pronouncement of his death is in the 26th chapter. But before he leaves, he tells his disciple, when I see you again in the final judgment, these are the six questions that I need an answer to. Now, you may think that's tough, but you have those six questions. Every one of you have the six questions, and I need you to put your name on the top of the exam. Go ahead, write your name, write your name, get it right, write your name, write your name on the top, because I've already discussed this with Pastor, and he's waiting for your answers to this final exam. Say amen or ouch, either one to help you right here. Either one to help you right here. A amen or ouch. You have, you have. 30 days to complete this take-home exam. Say amen. amen. Sister Sierra, this is a take-home exam. You have the questions. Pastor is awaiting the answers. Now, isn't it wonderful that you can go home and, and go on the internet you can go home and Google all this information. You can go home and read some books. You can come to Faith Theological Seminary and ask Maggie for some of the questions or some of the books. You can ask uh, Esmond to help you with the exam. You have all these resources available for you to take this exam. But please understand, this is the final exam. Now, someone says, I'm not turning it in. I'm, I'm not going to turn it in. Pastor don't know I'm here. You're not going to tell him I'm here. Well, don't turn it in. Don't turn it in. But let me tell you something. You will meet these questions again. You will meet these questions again. This, this Gary, is a, watch this, this is a pretest to the real test. Because you're going to meet these questions again. Jesus asked these disciples. He asked, he asked these disciples. He said, listen, listen. And if you notice, it's two groups of people. The right and the left. The sheep and the goat. I don't know which one you are, but anyway, the right and the left. The sheep and the goat. And he asked the same series of questions to each one of them. And, and this, this idea of I don't know when I did this to you or when did I do this to you did not pass with Jesus. He said, oh, yeah, you, you've had opportunity. You've had opportunity. I visited you six times. He said, when did we come? When did we come? When you did it to the least of mine. The least of mine. And that's a strange common denominator. Who is the least who is the least? Well, let's look at this. When I was hungry, when I was hungry, when I was hungry. And, 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 and I like this question, and, and I, I like, uh, 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 the, see, that they put it first, because I love food. I, I, I love food. I, I love. And I, I was raised in a home where my grandmother always had enough food, amen? She always cooked a full pot of greens and a full pot of beans, and she always had enough. And I said, Mother, why are you cooking so much? She said, you don't know who's coming by. 
Oh, yeah, money always had enough food. You don't know who's coming. In other words, the least, when somebody came by, you, strangers would come by because they know at Muddy's house there was going to be some need. Amen? So, he, But what he's talking about here is the suffering, the needy. That, that's a Greek word, the suffering, the needy. When did you deal with the suffering and the needy? When I was thirsty, when I was thirsty, and this is, this is, one who is feeling painful, one who is feeling painful. You know, if you really are thirsty, you really go without beverage, pain comes in your body and you're feeling weak. There's a lack of strength. When have you helped somebody who was painfully lack of strength, lack of strength? Sister Mickey did it today. She said, I feel that somebody's desperate. That's what he's talking about. Desperate, going through problems. There's desperation knocking at your door. That's what he's talking about, this thirsty. And he said, when I was a stranger, when I was a stranger. And, 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 and let me just upgrade this, Sister Mickey. He said, when did you deal with the question of immigration? Hello, say out right there. Say, ooh, that hurts, that, that hurts. This country is battling the question of immigration. Who do we let in and who do we take out? Who's a foreigner? Who's unheard of? It's really a question of hospitality. How do you treat people when they come to your house? How do you treat people when they come to you? Do you know some of us have friends that you know right now you're not welcome in their house? Say amen. Amen. There's some of you know you're not welcome in their house. I like going to uh, Pastor Walter's house. You're always welcome. You're always welcome. When I drive up in the door, the reason I know you're always welcome is because the garage door is always open. <laughs> garage door is open. And I know how to walk in. Amen? Sometimes I don't walk in because I know where the deep freezer is that's in the garage, and that's where all the fish is kept. Amen? But there, there's a welcome mat. Where's a welcome mat? Strangers. When was I naked? When was I naked? And this is, this is this idea of when did you meet someone? When did you deal with someone that was stripped? Someone who was barren. Someone that was without body. I'm going to upgrade this for you. This is really a question for the pro-life movement. When do you deal with those 3,160 aborted babies every day? 3,000 babies are aborted every day. What are, you, what are you saying about that? What are you saying about it? And I challenge my preacher friends about it. So I don't want to talk about abortion. I want to, well, if you don't talk about abortion, you're not preaching the gospel. Because Jesus said, I come that they might have life and have it, what? More abundantly. The unborn, the naked, the unborn, the helpless. It's not a cell, it's a life. Bishop Clement said it right. God did not create the woman's womb to be the baby's tomb. The naked, the down and out. When, when it, he said, when, when I was sick, when I was sick, when I was sick, when I was sick. And, and, and we do sick ministry all over. We do sick ministry. But better translate it, when did you deal with the weak and the feeble? I have a friend who volunteers for hospice. And I haven't got there yet, but that's a great ministry. To sit with someone. Knowing that they're in their last moments on planet earth. When did you deal with the sick? Those who are without strength. Those are the powerless. The feeble. That's why this idea of child abuse is wrong. These are hopeless, powerless, innocent babies. And we have a society who picks on them. When did you protect them? And then when I was in prison... Gary, I have to confess here. I have a problem with prison ministry. 
I, I, I have a problem with prison. I used to do prison ministry, but one day I was in San Quentin out in California, and those bars closed. <laughs> Then we went down the hall, <laughs> closed, and then we went into this chapel area or gym area to preach the gospel. And it wasn't my turn to preach. It was someone else's turn to preach. But I had this phobia that came over me, this fear that the prisoners held us hostage and wasn't going to let us out. And they said, give me that preacher. Give me that preacher. And they grabbed me with gunpoint in the hell. I had this in my head, in my head. So I have to pray about this prison ministry. But then I thought about it. A. Brown has a prison ministry. There's others who have prison ministry. And then if I visit some of my distant cousins that are in prison, I can do prison ministry. Amen? 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 Anybody got a cousin? A niece? You, I know you don't want to tell everybody, but you have somebody. <laughs> when I was in prison. Jesus asked these questions of us. And here's what it says, and I'm through. Here's what it says, and I'm through. Before you take this exam, how are you dealing with people? The least of these. The least of these. Brother Preacher, Brother Preacher, why, why, why did Jesus even give the exam? Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Then I'm through. Let me tell you. When it comes to the salvation issue, the redemption of mankind because of the sin of Adam, that is a request that needs a response for redemption. God is saying, once you acknowledge that you are a sinner, I'm waiting for a, re a response. I'm waiting for you to turn from your wicked ways and seek salvation through Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but my, by me. Jesus died on Calvary's cross, went in the grave, got up early Sunday morning that we could have all power to treat people right. That's, that's where it is. Not all power to go to heaven. Not all power to sit on a throne. Not all power to sing with angels. But all power that we can lead people. Red and yellow. Black and white. They are precious in his sight. Lead them to King Jesus. Because he is worthy to be worshipped. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. When is the last time you dealt with the least of them? That's what Jesus died for. That's what Jesus, listen, 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 listen. Listen, I'm getting excited. Listen, Gary. If, if his death was about us going to heaven, soon as you accepted him, how come you didn't go to heaven? If that's all it's about, see, see, just going to heaven, once you accept him, he could have took you in, amen, absent from the body to be present with the Lord. He said, no, now that you're saved, I want you to understand that you are saved to save someone else. The least of mine, the least of mine, the least of mine. And the reason you ought to do well on this exam, each and every one of you, you're in a church that helps the least. Say amen. You're in a church that has a program of feeding people. You're in a church that has a program of visiting the sick. You're in a church where you have two pastors who love preaching the gospel, who love teaching the gospel, have an academy, have a college, helping you understand the deal with the least. The least. J. Vernon McGee said it best. We as believers, once we get saved, we are so heavenly minded that we are no earthly good. No earthly good. You have the exam. Here's the questions. What are you going to do with them? What are you going to do with them? I challenged my church last week the same way. And Sister Mickey, some folks are still not speaking to me. Oh, they, they're, they're upset. One gentleman said, Pastor, that's cold. 
But here's my answer. It's in the Bible. Jesus finished with his disciples three years, Esmond, of seminary. And he said, here's the test. Six questions. What's the answer? Here's the test. There are hungry people. There are thirsty people. There are weak people. There are naked people. There's sick people and there's people in prison. What's our response? Write it down. Get it to your pastor. And then start being what Christ died for. This is what he died for. This is why he died. This is why he hung out there. On Calvary's cross, he didn't have to. He could have called 10,000 angels to come down and rescue. He didn't have to. Someone said, come down and save yourself. He said, no, I'm not going to do that. Because I see Bobby. I see Gary. And I'm going to stay here. Every head bowed, every eye closed. There may be someone under the sound of my voice that said, Brother Preacher, that was tough. That was hard. And I don't know what I'm going to do with this exam. Pastor Walters is not here and he don't have to know anything. But in your heart of hearts, you heard the message. He says, he who hears and does, does nothing about it, that's sin. My prayer is that these six questions be a wrestling match with you from now on. But your prayer should be, I want to get right. And there's several ways to do that. Number one, if you never accepted Jesus as your Savior, you've never asked him to come into your life, you can do that right now. You can do that right now. With every head bowed, every eye closed, if there's someone said, I've never accepted Jesus as my Savior, I've never asked him to come in my life, I don't have the ability to do this, just raise your hand, just raise your hand. I, I want Jesus in my life. I want Jesus in my life. And then my next appeal is, Brother Preacher, I have him in my life, but I don't have a church home. I, I don't have a place where I worship, a place where I fellowship. And I like out Faith Outreach Center to be my church home. Pastor Walters, Sister Walters to be my pastors. If that you just raise your hand. I, I need a church home. I need a church home. I see your hand. I see your hand. I need a church home. Amen. I see your hand. Bless you. Bless you. And then my last appeal is, preacher, pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. As the elders come forth, the elders come forth, the elders. Say, Pastor, pray for me. This is, this is rough stuff. And I've never knew that there was going to be a final exam in the final judgment. I never knew that I had to stand before Jesus himself and answer these six questions. And right now, and I need prayer. I, I need prayer. If that's you, just come on down. Just come on down. I need prayer. It's always appropriate to pray. God in all his sovereign power does not limit himself when it comes to prayer. He'll hear your prayer. He'll hear your cry. If that's you, just come on down for prayer. Come on down for prayer. Amen. Amen.